Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel called Jesus and Me. I am Pastor Kevin, and today I would like to talk about what to do if you miss the rapture. There's been a lot of questions on what the rapture is, and is there really going to be a rapture? Uh, where is it at in scripture? That kind of thing. So I'd like to just uh, talk about that a minute because I think it's very important uh, for people to know that um, people can still be saved after the rapture. So we're going to talk about those things on, on today. So stay tuned, pay attention, and uh, get your Bibles out. Reference the scriptures that I that I go over so you can look and read and study for yourselves and, and get an understanding, as the Word says, and all that getting, get an understanding. So let's go. <clears throat> so what to do if you miss the rapture? So what is the rapture? Well, the word rapture itself is not really defined or mentioned in scripture. Um, but the word is referenced in 1 Thessalonians, uh, the fourth chapter, verses 16 and 17. I have my Bible ready for it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and read that now. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, uh, 16 and 17. And it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Caught up is the operative words there. Uh, that's what rapture means in, in the Greek. <clears throat> we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them, to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And so that is good news right there. And again, that's what we want to come on here. We want to talk about the good news of Jesus Christ because Jesus is Lord. Uh, he came to earth. Uh, he taught us. He died on the cross. He was he, he rose from the grave and he ascended back into heaven. And the Bible specifically talks about he's coming again to what? To receive the church unto himself. So, and that's what we're talking about on today, the rapture itself. Okay. So again, the word rapture is not really in the Bible. It's not there, but the words caught up to meet him in the air is that's exactly what that means. Okay. So what do you do <clears throat> if you miss the rapture? Well, let me go through a few things here uh, that I have written down and uh, take these things in. Uh, if you're looking at this uh, after the rapture has happened, please, by all means, follow this video. Do what I'm telling you to do here. And we look to see you on the other side with Jesus. OK, number one, the first thing that you should do is what? Become a follower of Jesus Christ, bar none. OK, so you've you've already lived through this disappearance or whatever. You see that things are going on that is not normal. Things are never going to return uh, to what we call normal, okay? Uh, things are only going to become more chaotic and more frightening for those people who are not in Christ, okay? So the first thing you need to do is become a believer in Jesus Christ. So how do we do that? Well, the Bible tells us this is in Romans, the, the 10th chapter, Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth and believe that the Lord God raised Jesus from the dead, it says you shall be saved. That is the beginning of your journey with the Lord. But before you even go there, <clears throat> the Lord wants you to do what? Repent. He says to repent of your sins. First uh, John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So basically, God wants us to do what? Have a change of mind, okay? And he wants us to change our minds with sin. So basically, the, the things that we're doing that don't line up with what he's said to do or that don't line up with his word, he wants us to do what? A complete 180-degree turn, change our minds toward that thing, come back to him, live with him, allow him to live in us, and allow him to live through us. And that's basically how you want to live your life. Man, there's no better way than to live than, than to be in Christ Jesus and to know without a, a, a shadow of a doubt that when your time here on earth is done, we go right into the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. Okay, so the first thing to do is become a believer in Jesus Christ. Let's go over a few more scripture there. Mm -hmm. So 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. God is the original promise keeper. God has made many, many promises to us, his people, in his word. And God keeps every single promise. So he is not slack concerning his promise. Uh, the Bible says, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish. You got that? I mean, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. God is not willing that anyone should perish, 
but that all should come to what? Repentance. There's that word again. He wants us to do what? Recognize that we're walking in sin, or walking away from him. Recognize that. Stop where you are. Turn around and come back to him. That is the very essence of repentance. Stop doing the sin. Come back to God. Now, you're not going to be perfect or anything like that, you know, living forward for God. But the thing is this, you're not going to be looking to sin. So we're looking to live with Christ, to live for Christ and allow him to what? Live through us. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to another, another scripture here. Um, <clears throat> and we already mentioned again, it's very important that you now become a believer in Jesus Christ. And again, Romans 10, 9 and 10 is where you can find the words that will help you with that. All right, number two, do not take the mark. Do not take the mark. What are you talking about? Well, we know that <clears throat> during these perilous times that, uh, and this is going to be after, after the rapture happens, uh, the government is actually going to require people to take a mark on their on their hands or on their foreheads. And you will need that mark. People will, they're going to tell you this, that you will need that mark in order to buy, sell, or trade, and basically to, to do basic living. In order to buy goods for your home, goods for your family, to buy, sell, or trade, you're going to need that mark. I'm saying right here, right now, do not take the mark. Because if you take the mark, you immediately identify and you belong to Satan. Okay, we'll get into some of that and how God identifies his people, how God separates his people. Uh, just a few moments here, but do not take the mark. Uh, my reference scripture for this, find yourself a Bible. My reference scripture for this is in Revelation 13, 16 and 17. And it says this, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, if you're watching this video and these disappearances have happened and things are, you don't have answers and things are going chaotic, pay attention because the next thing is going to that's going to happen. Some guy's going to rise up. He's going to have favor with all with every nation on earth. He's going to seem like he has all the answers, but he really does not. Uh, he's going to make a covenant with Israel for seven and a half years, three and a half years. He's into the covenant. He's going to break the covenant. Okay. And then he's going to, all of this is going to start where you have to have that mark on your hand or on your forehead. All right. So I just read from revelation 13 verses 16 and 17, pay attention. Do not take the mark. Okay. Uh, first John two and 18 says this little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come by which we may, by which we know that it is the last hour. What does that mean that many Antichrists have come? Well, anyone who is not uh, for Jesus Christ is Antichrist, is against Jesus Christ, as simple as that. So anyone who is against Jesus Christ does not align with his teachings and try and teach anyone else to disalign with, with his teaching is an Antichrist. Okay, but we're talking about the main guy here that I just mentioned a, more, a few minutes ago that is going to come in on, on the scene. It's going to seem like he's got all the answers to all the problems, and basically he's going to deceive everyone. Okay, so if you, when you see this, pay attention. Do not take the mark. All right, next scripture. Uh, look at 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 3 and 4. It says this, let no one deceive you by any means. Very, very important. If you're watching this video and the rapture has happened, you have been deceived, but that can end now. Okay, get yourself a Bible, follow these scriptures, and, and listen to what I'm telling you here. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. What does that mean, the falling away? Well, basically, uh, in my generation and generations that were before me, um, our parents uh, taught us about God. Uh, scripture was read in schools up until, I think, the 1960s. And I think it was early 1960s, uh, 60, 62, somewhere up in there, where, where the Bible was actually taken out of school. And when the Bible was taken out of school, I'm telling you, all hell broke loose in the schools from there. Everything went down here from, from there. So in my generation, we had the Bible in schools. Um, <clears throat> well, it's a little bit before me, but we still, but but my mother, my parents, my my grandmother, man, we were 
we had our Bible at home. My mother had us memorize scripture, that kind of thing. Um, the generation after me came along. Some of them uh, kept the Bible in their in their homes or whatever. Um, uh, but for the most part, a lot of people felt that you know having God in their life was just for was an, was an ancient tradition. I was no good or just some some teaching that someone some false teaching that someone had made up to try and keep all the people in line. So a lot of things came out. OK, but really, a lot of people fell away from God. A lot of people just fell away from God. They didn't even they didn't know God, didn't want to know God, didn't know if God really existed, that kind of thing. But as you if you're watching this video and the rapture has happened, you know, there is a God because of the things that I'm telling you. OK, <clears throat> so it says that no one. Let no one deceive you, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, all that really means, let me just cut to the chase, uh, there's going to be a temple that's going to be built over in Jerusalem. Uh, this guy at some point is going to go into that temple and declare himself to be God. And, and again, you'll see these things come to pass, just as sure as I'm telling you why. These are not my words, but these are the words of Almighty God that's already written. So what's the pattern of God? God tells us what? He tells us what he's going to do. He does it. And then he tells us what he's, what he's done. That is his pattern all throughout the Bible. Everywhere throughout the Bible, that's his pattern. All right? So what's the next thing you do? The third thing you should do. Find yourself a Bible, read it vigorously, read it continuously, soak it up. Ask God to give you wisdom, understanding, and enlightenment of his word so that you can understand it and find out what he means in his word. Here are my suggested readings, and, and, and you can just take this list for what you what you want, uh, for the way you want to do it. You can read it, <clears throat> but I suggest you read it in this order. Read the Gospel of John. Uh, in the Gospel of John, it talks about Jesus. It tells us about really who Jesus is. Uh, from his godly personality, okay? Uh, it talks about Jesus as being God. In, in the book of John, he makes several I am statements, several I am statements. He says, number one, he says, before Abraham was, he says, I am. Then he says in, in John 14, chapter, which is my favorite verse, 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me, which means there's only one way to the Father, that is through Jesus Christ. All roads do not lead to heaven. All roads do not lead to, to God. The one road leads to God. That is the road that Jesus Christ is walking on. Find that road and you will find God. Amen? All right, so the Gospel of John. Then go back to Genesis and read Genesis. All right, then the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Look at uh, First and Second Thessalonians. Read Revelations. Read Romans. Read First and Second Corinthians. Uh, Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, uh, these actually tell you how to live as Christians. Paul wrote most of these books, that uh, the latter books that I just mentioned here. Paul wrote most of those books, and he was writing them to who? He was writing them to Christian people and was trying to tell Christian people how to live for God. And the knowledge that Paul is, is giving there through, throughout, throughout those books there was given to him by who? by the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, I didn't learn this from any man, but I've spent three years in Arabia and I learned all of this from Jesus the Christ himself, okay? So Paul didn't learn this from anybody but Jesus. So it is it's considered to be very wise if you listen to what he has to say when you read through these books, okay? All right, so number four, get out of the cities, go into the country and learn to live off the land quietly. Why do I say quietly? Because this, at this time, there's going to be a lot of chaos that's happening in the cities. There's going to be mobs. There's going to be a lot of things. Lots of crime, crime is going to go up until things kind of get back in line there. Uh, and But when things get back in line, it's not going to be what you thought it should be. It's not going to return to normal or what you thought was normal. Things are going to be very, very different. All right. And this Antichrist guy is, come on, is going to come on the scene. OK, so. Get out of the cities, get into the country, learn to live off the land, live out there quietly. Why do I say quietly? Because, and I'll come back to this later on, the government is going to hunt you down and they're going to require you to take the mark. We'll come back to that. All right. <clears throat> uh, just a little bit. All right. Number five, trust no one. Absolutely trust no one. Um, the one whom the whole world loves and trusts is, going, is the guy that's going to be called the Antichrist. Okay. 
Uh, he's going to seemingly have all the answers. Uh, he's going to be a smooth talker. Uh, don't listen to him. Find your Bible. Read those things that I just told you to read. First uh, John uh, chapter 2, 22 and 23 says this, who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. You got that? Who is a liar, but who? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Okay, so now I was telling you we're going to, we're going to come back to living quiet and everything. So number six, and I got several points under number six here. Survive at all costs as long as you can. Okay, so... I have to give you some hard truths here, okay? Um, prepare to be captured. When you're out there and you're living off the land, prepare to be captured, okay? Uh, once you're captured, the authorities, the government will ask you to deny Jesus Christ or be put to death by beheading. Don't deny Jesus Christ. Um, if you want to live again, do not deny Jesus Christ. Never ever deny Jesus Christ. Look, the Bible tells us this, Matthew, the 10th chapter, 32 and 33 says this, therefore, whoever confesses me, talking about this is Jesus talking, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Then he says, but whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. What does all that mean? If you deny Jesus Christ before men, you are denied entrance into the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does not deny Jesus is allowed entrance into the kingdom of heaven, those who have accepted him. And that's simply, you know, that's simply all that means. Okay, Jesus demands to be number one, and he should be. He, he, God, the God who, who, of all creation, why should he take a back seat to anything or to anyone, to your wife, your husband, your children, your cousin, your, your car, your house, or whatever. Why should God take a backseat to any of that when he is the creator of all that there is? He deserves all of our praises, all of the glory, all of the honor. He deserves that. Now, whether you agree with it or not, he's still God. And you can argue or whatever, but he is still God. All right? So establish that in your thinking, okay? All right. Next point, prepare to be put to death. I told you I was going to give you some hard truths. This is a truth. Prepare to be put to death. Revelation 20 and 4 says this in the first part of it. It says, then I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls, of, pay attention, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. So now what that is saying is that they... Uh, lived in a way, in a, in a manner of speaking, in a manner where when they were confronted and they said, either you deny Jesus or we're going to behead you, we're going to cut your head off. They said, do what you got to do. You know, here's the thing. When you are in Christ, okay, there is no, there's no dying because <laughs> I just got to clean it up and explain that. When we die, we who live in Christ Jesus, death is really considered, death is really only a doorway or a transition from the physical world into the spirit world where Jesus is. The spirit world is more real than what you, than, more real than my, my cup here, okay? It's more real than my chair that I'm sitting in because that's where God is, okay? So, <laughs> and, and, and again, I, I know that sounds a bit strange, but the, the, the spirit world is where you all, we all want to end up. Uh, when this, when, when everything is said and done here, okay. But uh, what I'm telling you here is that be prepared to be put to death, and and I'm telling you this as a comfort, okay. When you, when when they, if if you get to the point where you say, well, I'm I'm not going to deny Christ, and they uh, behead you, the Bible says tells us this: that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's in Galatians. Okay, to be absent from the body, which means that your spirit man comes out of your body, right, and goes right into the presence of God, right? That's when you're in Christ. For those people who are not in Christ, when they die in this world, there's a second death that is waiting to happen to them. I just did a video uh, on, uh, on death uh, just recently uh, talking about that and what happens uh, to people who die the second death. 
Uh, people who died a second death, basically that's that's hell. That's actually, um, you're going to hell and then going into the lake of fire um, and, and you'll be there forever. So people who die in Christ are living in Christ, living with God forever in heaven. People who die without Christ are living in the, the living in the lake that burns with fire forever. You're not dead, which means that there's no ceasing to exist. Okay, hear what I'm saying on this. You, that there's no, that's, you don't cease to exist. You're going to live fully conscious, either in heaven or in hell. So God, so I mean, He so loved us that He made a plan of salvation for us through Jesus. And I'm, and again, I'm begging you again. I, I, I beg you again. Please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now, right now, right now. Let's just get it done right now. Okay. All right, we got a little bit to go, and I'm going to end this video, and um, and then we'll say a prayer about how, again, about how you can get to Jesus, okay? All right, so you've been marked by the Holy Spirit. So when you're in this place, and I say prepare to be put to death, when you say, make your decision and say, no, I'm not going to deny Jesus Christ. Again, prepare to be put to death. The Bible says this, because if you have, you've taken that position, Revelation 9, 3, 4 says this, then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given what power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Men and women, okay, that's what that means. They were only going to harm the, the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now, I talked about earlier about God is always separating his people. Again, God separates his people. God identifies his people. God has put a mark upon you when you have now given yourself to Jesus Christ. God has sealed you in the Holy Spirit. There's a mark upon you that determines that you belong to God. Hey, Amen. That is good news. That is good news. So if you die physically right now in this world, you are now going right into the hands, into the arms of our loving God, into the arms of Jesus Christ, and you live forever and ever and ever with him. Man, that is good news. This is the best news that you can get on this side of the earth, on this side of life. Give yourself to Jesus Christ right now. All right. Continue to confess Jesus Christ for your reward is great. The, the second part of Revelation 20 and 4 says this, who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived, check this out, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now, again, that's, that causes you to do more study right there. A thousand years. Go back and study the thousand year reign of Christ. It's, it's in Revelation there, and it tells you what's going to happen there, okay? Uh, we're not going to go through that in this video, but I I just, um, I encourage you, highly encourage you to go back and study that. And then, you know, I like to say this, I have read the back of the book, the end of the book, okay? Revelation 20 chapter talks about what happens to Satan, what happens to the false prophet, what happens to the beast. They're all defeated. Jesus wins, guys. Read the end of the book. God, again, tells us what he's going to do. He does it. And then he tells us what he did. He doesn't lose any battles. All right. So that's really going to conclude uh, this video talking about what to do if uh, if you miss the rapture. But before we go, let's say this prayer. Father in heaven, I have sinned. I've sinned greatly before you. I own the sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior right now, God. And from this point on, Father, I believe that I am saved because I have a change of heart. I have a change of mind, and I now choose to live for you. Jesus, I ask you to come and live inside of me and live through me. Lord God, show me how to live in this world, in this earth. Oh, God, until I'm, until I'm transitioning to be with you. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. I thank you uh, for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.